Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good Sunday. Today is Sunday, the 31st of January, 2021. Thank you for tuning into the show. Glad to have you guys here. Now, you know what? Central banks are scared. They're scared of crypto. This is why they're putting that warning out there right now. If you guys haven't heard it, the central banks are saying, hey, you can lose 100% of your money. Well, like, the dollar can't go to zero. You know what? The dollar could go to zero and could go to zero very quickly now. The, the uh, Things are in place that uh, where there's a situation out there where the more money that the central bank creates, the more money is going to go into crypto. And that's why they're frightened of it. Crypto goes up, dollar goes down. And they're forced to print more. And right now, they don't want to print more. They don't want to print more. They want to kind of hold it back. But here's what will happen if they hold back. Everything will start to crash. Stock market would start to crash. It would be a trickle-down effect into the economy. The economy's already crashed from this COVID. The economy's practically dead out there. But things could get a whole lot worse than that. And all of a sudden, they would look at the situation. They'd say, hey, you know what? Our jobs are in jeopardy. People, we could have a revolution, or worse. Uh, we can't let the system completely entirely dissolve. We got to get out there and print. So as soon as they start printing again, right? They turn the presses back on again. What do you think is going to happen to the cryptocurrency price? So what's their next move? Uh, I could see them actually trying to do some sort of an illegal thing, make Bitcoin illegal. Uh, maybe a concerted effort by the Western countries and the central banks of the Western countries to try to illegalize it. Uh, they could make excuses and say, oh, well, it's uh, used for money laundering. Uh, oh, well, it's used for illicit, uh, illicit funding. And on, on and on they could go with all these excuses. But the real reason why they're doing it is it actually threatens their, their ability to be the big cheeses and make all the money themselves, their money, their money. It threatens their money because, you know, there's Gresham's Law. And I remember from a little child the effect of Gresham's Law. As we They brought out all these coins, you know, back in this was around 1968. And these coins were all, uh, uh, they weren't white. There was white coins mixed in. Like if you got a ha big handful of change, there might be two white coins mixed in there. White coins were made of silver. All of the other coins had that silvery look, but they weren't silver. They were basically a combination of copper mixed with nickel and so on, right? But they weren't silver. What people would do is pick out the silver ones. And I was a little kid, and I even knew to pick out good money from bad. And I saved a few before they all really disappeared, because people were picking them out so vor voraciously out there. People were going to the bank and getting rolls of change and picking out all the white ones, that they disappeared rather quickly. By 1972, 1973, they were all but gone. I mean, you'd have to go in and get $500 worth of quarters to find, like, one silver by that time, you know. And now they're, they're all gone. <laughs> I mean, now you'd have to go in, in, in with a truckload, sort through a truckload just to probably find one real silver one. There's still a few there, but they're very hard to find now. But this is Gresham's Law. And Bitcoin is fitting right in with Gresham's Law. Bitcoin is the good money. It's like the silver mixed in with the bad money, which is the U.S. dollar. So what's happening is we're seeing the Bitcoin go up in one direction, higher. We're seeing the dollar go down. Now, this is frustrating them because they're the big cheeses. They control everything. And they're saying, what can we do? Because as we print money, this is restricting our ability to print money. Because as we print money, Bitcoin, people are going to buy Bitcoin with the money we print. Bitcoin is going to go up and up. And after a while, everybody's going to notice this. And everybody will buy Bitcoin. No matter how much we print, it'll just make Bitcoin go higher and higher. And it'll hyperinflate the dollar. And it, Bitcoin will deflate. And what are we going to do? Well, well, let's warn the people out there to stay clear and see if that works. So right now they're in the warning stage. Next stage is probably going to be some sort of a crackdown. So you want to know what they could do with a crackdown? 
they could effectively knock the price of Bitcoin down. But this talk that they're saying right now, hey, we can knock it to zero, I don't think so. What they'll do is they'll send it in the black market. And they could, I think they could substantially reduce the price of Bitcoin. But, you know, for the smart people out there, when it hits bottom, and listen, by the way, if they do this, what I'm talking about, I'll be there with you guys all the way through it. And I'll be com doing commentary on what they're doing. But I don't see them killing it. I, I, I could see them actually knocking it down probably as low as five or six thousand dollars. They could. If they all did a really good concerted effort, but they'll send it underground. People will still own it. It's almost impossible to rid the world of it unless you rid the world of the internet. Because every computer that carries a full node of whatever coin you're talking about, whether it's Bitcoin or Litecoin, you know, uh, the people download the Litecoin wallet, they download the Litecoin node, they download the Bitcoin wallet, they download the Bitcoin node. Bitcoin node is really big. It's like, I forget, something like 80 gigabytes or something now. It's, it's monstrous, huge. But it carries all the transactions that's ever occurred in the network from the beginning till now. And so you could restore Bitcoin from that Bitcoin node. So you'd have to get rid of every darn computer that has a Bitcoin node in it. Ain't gonna happen, guys. So Bitcoin's going to survive, but it's going to go underground. People will own Bitcoin, and they'll just keep it on a paper, a little slip of paper on an offline wallet someplace. Then goodness knows where they'll keep their little piece of paper. Uh, I mean, it might be stuck up in their attic, stuck to the stuck to the stuck to the rafter, you know, on the side of the rafter, up in the attic someplace, hidden underneath a, a hat or something like that. And you never find it. You search the house, you'd never find it. You know, or they might have it on a little USB pen drive someplace. Gosh knows where, buried in the ground. How are you going to find that? They're not going to be able to get rid of Bitcoin, right? And that would be what they did some sort of massive effort. I mean, for most, for the most part, uh, Bitcoin will just go underground. And then it'll start from a new base price. Whatever they drive it down to. Say they drive it down to $5,000. It'll start from there again. And it'll start to climb again. And then people will start to buy it, but on the QT. They'll 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 go to uh, they'll go to the, the dark webs or wherever to buy it. And they'll put it on the paper wallet someplace and just have it as an insurance policy against the financial system. And Bitcoin will start to rise in price again then because people are buying it, even though it's illegal. They will. They will. I mean, do they all those years that they had pot, you know, weed, illegal, all those years, years and years, like 40 years, they come down and crack down hard on it, guys. Did they get rid of it? <laughs> it won in the end. It's everywhere now. Big companies, I mean, everybody's investing in it now, a lot of people anyway, you know, and it's bigger than it ever was. You know, it just has to go through time, but this Bitcoin, you know, if they do crack down on it like that, yeah, initially they could drive the price down. It's going to hit a bottom, though, and that's a place to buy in again. Bitcoin will never die. It's too good an invention at this point. It's slowly going to make inroads. And in the end, you know, it's it's a long-term investor, the guy that looks out and says, hey, you know what, I don't care if it does go down to $5,000, I ain't getting rid of my Bitcoin. And I'll put it on a paper wallet someplace or even a brain wallet, and I'll hide it from them. Uh, that's what the people say, you know, that's what they'll say to themselves. And it's almost impossible to stop it. Because to root it actually out, there have to be a concerted effort by every government on earth. And when can they cooperate on anything? If you take a look at the governments, some 190 different governments around the earth, and they're never in agreement on anything. One country decides, okay, we're going to legalize this and we're going to make that illegal. And they just sit there and they make these rules up. They put new laws on the books all the time. And then they expect you to obey them. And if you don't know the new obscure law, whatever they made it to be, they have a law where they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, how am I supposed to know you just passed some sort of legislation and, and, and I didn't even know about it? I might have had the flu, I might have been sleeping or whatever, and I go out and I, I do something, and they've made it illegal. 
Maybe it's uh, now it maybe it's illegal to go hunting or something like that. And uh, I didn't even know you made the law. And then they say to you, well, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, who put that law in? You know, I mean, it just gets ridiculous in the end. They keep adding all these new laws, never taking the old laws off the books. And they got these law books. And this is why they need lawyers who just study these law books all the time. And it just grows. It grows. The government grows. The laws grow. And in the end, what it does is it, it, it hampers free commerce. And in the end, you get a society like we have, a society that's in decay. And it comes to a point in the end where the people just can't stand it anymore. And then they change everything. The whole world changes and it goes back to a system where there's not so many laws anymore. They start fresh. This is a reset. <laughs> so we're, we're on the verge of a changing world right now. Everything's getting ready to change big time. The Robin Hooders are out there right now. And they're they're all for change. And they're, they're going to try to rip the system apart. But that's not the way to change things, you know. To rip things completely apart by locking up the financial system. Uh, that's dangerous. And I don't think the Robin Hood traders realize right now... They're touching the holy of holies. They're touching the sacred eye of, of, of the of the in the temple of doom. Silver. They're going after silver. This is a this is the Achilles heel of the world financial system. Because if silver rises in price too much, gold will follow. They always follow each other. Could crush everything. You know, could lock things up. Uh, could have a crisis uh, unproportional in size and scope and magnitude, you know, from something like this. Uh, could be, they could create a situation where there's a mad rush into silver and it doesn't rush out because their paper's all worthless. Paper money is worthless from the get go. The biggest mistake they ever made was in 1971 when they, Nixon took us off of the gold standard and he knew he was making a mistake. He knew it was a mistake, did it anyway, but he said, we are temporarily, to stop the speculators, we are temporarily, and he used that word, temporarily. Well, is temporarily from 1971 until now, is that temporary? What's temporary about that? To stop the speculators. It's, all, it's always some excuse, too, they use, like to stop the speculators. Uh, now the excuse to try to get rid of Bitcoin is uh, to stop money laundering. It's always some excuse they use to put through some law that they never asked us. They never ask us. They never ask our opinion. The only time they'll ever give us our opinion is when we vote. And now now they're, they've, they've put such a, a screw in that that we don't even know whether it's what's going on with that anymore. You know, and I, I mean... What, what it is, is they don't want us to be able to voice our opinion on anything. Quite literally, they want to uh, keep us in a position where we are the serfs, and we are the waifs, and they are the lords. You know, and like in England, you know, you go on queen, the queen's land and you kill a deer because you're starving to death. Back in those days, you know, and and uh, they'd haul you away and put you in prison for the rest of your life or whatever or worse. You know, I can't remember. I don't remember I, what the penalties were. But then they owned hundreds of thousands of acres with herds of deer. Too many deer. The near deer should have been culled because there's so many of them. You know, and, and this is the way things go. It's like oppress the little guy. And see the same things happen in the United States. I hear people are going into the grocery store and stuff and maybe stealing a piece of fruit, maybe stealing an apple or whatever. Because they're desperate. They're hungry. Food banks can't keep up with what's going on. And things could get a whole lot worse very soon. So listen, if you guys got a little bit of Bitcoin, don't be frustrated if these central bankers very, time, very soon in the next year or so decide to turn on it and try to drive it out of existence. Just remember, they won't drive it out of existence, but they can send it underground. 
But that doesn't mean it's going to be worthless. In fact, it'll hit a low point, and then it'll start moving up from there very, very slowly again. And so, save it. Say, it's a big, your biggest way to give a big finger to these establishment that has been keeping us under oppression all the way through history is to hang on to it no matter how worthless it becomes. Don't let them shake you out of the tree. You know, and, and uh, don't let them frighten you. And ultimately, in the end, their system is crumbling. This system that we're in right now is crumbling, and it's not going to stop crumbling. It's going to keep crumbling until it's replaced with a new system. That is a given. That can't be stopped at this point in time. It's written into the cards. Their money is crumbling. And there's going to be no recovery. The debt is too far expanded at this point. And it's in the numbers now. It's a numbers game. And the numbers say that the system has to collapse utterly. And there's no reason why they shouldn't print now at this point. Just go ahead and print. Uh, to stop people from starving and stuff, because it's all going to go to zero anyway in the end. Their system has had it. And so they can sit there and they can badmouth Bitcoin all they want. And we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Bitcoin's going to go to zero and all this kind of stuff. It only means that they're scared. They're scared at this point. They're scared of the Robin Hood traders. They're scared. Of, they're scared. They're scared that they're going to go after silver and drive the silver and gold price up. They're, they are actually terrified right now because they see their system crumbling and they don't know what to do about it. Nobody's got an answer. And this is because way back, there's two big mistakes that they made. The first big mistake was way back in 1914 when they established the Fed. And the second was when Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971. And those two things ensured that the system was going to collapse eventually. It was written into the cards. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.